Hey there, welcome back. You've probably seen all the hype around AI and machine learning and it is everywhere. But let's be real, breaking into this field isn't as easy as some suggest in these YouTube videos. Breaking into AI is hard work, it's confusing and often frustrating. So let's break down the BS together. We're going to first unpack this job posting. Google is hiring an AI engineer no indication of level in the title. When you actually read through the detail, you'll see that they actually want nine years of experience working with client-side web technology like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I'm not sure why a machine learning engineer needs to know CSS, but let's move on. Nine years of experience coding with one or more programming languages like Java, C, C++, and Python. Again, I don't know who uses C anymore. Next is seven years of experience building machine learning. So they want you to have nine years working with CSS as well as machine learning. Like who does that? According to Levels at FYI, someone with five to 10 years of experience is usually considered a senior software engineer. And 10 plus here is internally called a staff level at Google. And yet Google is not using that title in the job description. If you want to understand more about the different job levels, I do have a video about it that you can watch later. Going through these job description is like trying to understand the secret language, right? And that is a common problem in tech. And I'm here to make sense of all of this lingo and tech jargon and BS. I've been working in tech for almost 20 years. I was an early engineer at WhatsApp and worked as a hiring manager at Facebook after the $19 billion acquisition. So I'll help you translate this code and understand what companies are actually looking for and also stick around to the end for practical strategies for breaking into AI without needing a fancy degree. First, let's understand the educational landscape and the competition within AI and machine learning and software engineering. I did an analysis video about a year ago and I updated it with more job listings. For this video, I analyzed 87 job postings. These included 32 AI and machine learning specific positions without specified seniority level plus 48 software engineering roles that was clearly labeled as a junior or a senior role. So collectively, these positions had a total of 85,333 applications at the time of analysis. My intern, Emma, and I got this information thanks to LinkedIn's premium feature. And just to be clear, I'm not sponsored by LinkedIn or anything. I actually pay them a monthly fee to get this data. And I do it to share the data with you guys so you can understand more about the truths behind the competitive job market. So let's break down the education levels. For junior roles, it was pretty even between bachelor's and master's degree, with only 4% having PhDs. It's almost an even 50-50 split. For senior roles, about 35% had bachelor's degree, 52 master's, and 3% have PhDs. It's close to a 40-60 ratio between bachelor's and master's degrees. And here's where it gets interesting. About a quarter of AI ML candidates have a bachelor's degree, while more than half had master's and 11% had PhDs. So again, roughly a 40-60 split. So this means breaking into AI and machine learning is as competitive as landing a senior role, at least when it comes to education levels. If you just finished school or have a limited number of experience and you're struggling to land an AI job, this is probably why. I am not saying that you should get a fancy PhD just because some people who apply to these AI roles have PhDs. It does not necessarily mean you need to get one too. It just means that there are a lot of people with PhDs trying to get the same jobs as you. Personally, I do believe there's a better way than spending 10 years in school trying to get a bachelor's, master's, and PhD when you don't even know these jobs will still be around in the future with all the changes coming with AI's development. And I want to discuss my strategy. But first, let's talk about why so many machine learning job postings ask for a PhD. Is a PhD really necessary to do the work? Well, according to this post on Quora by Corin Lakeland, it's not always because a job really needs someone with a PhD. Companies are often adding it to the job for a few different reasons. Number one being that it's a good filter. It can act as a filter for the vast number of applications 
that they get. Like I said earlier, for the 87 job postings, they had 85,333 applicants. That's a lot of people to sort through. Number two, they do it to make the job look more prestigious. They think that this will help them attract better candidates. Number three is to get a higher salary budget. If they say the job needs a PhD, they can ask for a higher salary from HR. Oftentimes, Larger companies like Facebook has a dedicated team called compensation team that is just for deciding who gets paid what. And lastly, having someone with a PhD can look good even if the work doesn't necessarily require it. So let's cut to the chase. Whether or not you have a PhD doesn't really change the fact that you want to build a career in AI or machine learning and many people view it as the future. So how do you break into this industry without a fancy degree? The key here is strategy, not brute force. If you have been applying for AI roles over and over and over and not hearing back from anyone, I recommend that instead of waiting for the perfect AI role, you focus on getting your foot in the tech door to start building up your resume. Right now, the market is terrible and the competition is fierce, especially if you don't have a PhD and you're up against candidates with PhDs, it's going to be tough. And again, if you're flooded with job offers, you know, skip and stop watching the video. But if you're not able to land an AI ML role, my recommendation is to go for adjacent roles. Your goal is to gain as much work experience as possible in these adjacent roles so it can help you build a strong foundation. Your goal would be to try to transition into AI career down the road. And I will list out the specific adjacent roles. But first, let me explain why you want to focus on these adjacent roles. Having a job, even if it's not your dream role, is better than being unemployed. And the sooner you start working, the faster you'll be gaining practical knowledge and skill that are highly valued in the AI industry. The number one thing that companies are looking for when they're hiring is prior experience. Once you get your foot in the door, you can work towards moving into ML AI track. So aim for roles with better interview odds. If interviews are scarce, go for less competitive roles. For example, highly specialized roles like AI, machine learning architect, natural language processing, computer vision engineer, these often require a lot more advanced skills and experience and the bar is much higher. More accessible entry points include things like data science, data analysis, business analysis. And not to say these roles are super easy to land, but they're just slightly less competitive compared to the ones that I listed earlier. Another reason is that these roles can give you a good understanding of data and problem solving, which are essential skills for AI machine learning. Also, don't overlook software engineering. Even though these are not directly AI or machine learning, many software engineers do transition into these roles because you can slowly transition into the adjacent projects that can also help you transition into AI. Of course, if you're lucky enough to have multiple interview offers, choose a role that excites you the most. However, if you are in a tough market like this, take the strategic approach and don't be afraid to start in related roles it can really be a stepping stone in fulfilling your AI career. Sometimes people worry that they will be pigeonholed into a role. And usually these data related roles let you gain a lot of transferable skills. And I've seen many people transfer into various other roles. The only role that I've seen that people do really get pigeonholed into is QA roles. It's also one of the roles that will be the first to be replaced by AI. So I wouldn't really recommend QA as a stepping stone. And if you're curious which jobs will survive in the age of AI and which will be the first to be replaced, watch this video. Otherwise, YouTube thinks that you should watch this one next. I'll see you there.